What will happen if a guy pretends to be deaf-mute and he is found by nuns who have long wanted new sensations? The heroes of this film love each other, but they had to separate to escape from two powerful counts. It's movie recap zone, how insatiable nuns used a young boy for comfort and whether the lovers managed to be together again you will see in this story. Enjoy the video. The narrator of the film was a thief at first, however his hands were dear to him. He changed his craft. The man became a painter in the church. He liked the new work. At some point, people's lives changed. The plague came. We watch Lorenzo being pursued by Gerbino de la Rado's men. They catch up with the hero at the wall. Gerbino orders the lad to surrender. However, Lorenzo is a very nimble young man. Lorenzo gets to the right place. Pompinia came out on the balcony. The girl was watching the hero. The guy put flowers near the monument and left. Then Lorenzo met with his friends. The guys reported that Gerbino had ambushed the hero's house. The artist was painting angels in one of the temples of the city. He asked the boy about the priest. The man was asleep. The artist checked on the priest. It turned out that the man had died of the plague. The artist let the assistant go home. He decided to try on the priest's cassock himself. The and Gerbino and the boys went to Pompinia's house. The man went inside the building. Pompina was wearing a mourning outfit. Durbino expressed his condolences to the girl. Pompina was going to marry Count Dzerzhinsky. Gerbino told the beauty about the fact that her father owed a lot of money. All the property of the Anastagi family belonged according to him, Gerbino. The man offered her to pay her father's debt. He wanted to marry the girl. Pompina was shocked. The man knelt in front of her and kissed the girl's hand. Lorenzo tried to escape from the chase. On the way he met a stranger with a cart. The guy wanted to clarify the direction of the road. The man was behaving strangely. He talked to the dead man on the cart. The hero learnt that the gardener died in the monastery. He galloped in the direction of the future hideout. The enemies almost caught up with Lorenzo. To deceive the riders, the guy climbed a tree and let go of his horse. However, the branch could not support the lad's weight. Lorenzo fell down. The hero was found by the nuns. The girls brought him to the convent. The girls looked at the handsome boy. They decided to see if the boy's bones were all right. They took turns probing the boy's stomach. Lorenzo woke up. He liked the nuns' attention. The girls decided to kiss the stranger on the lips. The guy opened his eyes. The nun screamed. Mother Superior approached the nuns. The woman clarified if the guy could hear and talk. Lorenzo pretended to be mute and deaf. The girls thought he was an angel. The nuns took the boy to wash. Lorenzo was washing himself in the tub. The nuns were helping him to cleanse himself. Pompinia wanted to see her friends. The girl and her friend Philomena went to the church. Their friends were waiting for them. Pompinia told about her father leaving her a house. They were going to go there to wait out the peak of the disease in the city. The heroine told about her wedding to Count Dzerzinski. Elisa suggested that her friend test the Count before the wedding. Philomena defended Pompinia's maiden honor. However, Elisa was aware of her friend's love for Lorenzo. Their conversation was interrupted by Gerbino. He suspected the girls of collusion. On the bench, Gerbino saw Lorenzo's friends. He wanted to teach the boys a lesson. The painter was drinking upstairs. He watched what was happening in the church. The man decided to stop the fight. Wearing the cassock of a holy father, he went downstairs. Gerbino pointed his blade at the man. Pompini asked about Lorenzo. Gerbino said her friend was dead. The next day, Felamin arrived at the meeting place by wagon. She introduced Uncle Bruno to the friends. The boys met Tindaru's father. Pompina did not go with her friends. The girl went to the convent. She decided there to save her maiden honor until her wedding with the Count. The nuns helped the heroine to change her clothes. Pompini saw the young man in the courtyard. The girls told about the fact that their gardener was deaf-mute. Lorenzo was tending the garden at the monastery. He was driving a cart with weeds. The boy was called by a nun. The couple hid behind some bushes. Pompinia watched this. The heroine was jealous of Lorenzo. Count Dzerzhinsky came to town. In Anastasi's house, Gerbino's boys were training. The man was surprised by the arrival of the Russian count. The guy mistook Gerbino for Pompinia's father. Gerbino and Dzerzhinsky decided to find out which of them would marry the heroine. The count drove off. On the road, he was met by Anastasi's servant. He handed Dzerzhinsky a letter from the heroine. The count went to the villa. Lorenzo sat in the gardener's house at the convent. The nuns brought the boy something to eat. They wanted to have fun with the gardener. Pompina's friends were on their way to the villa. Philomena reasoned about being proud of her honor. The girl was sure that her fiancé, Dianeo, fully supported her views. 
the carriage disappeared round the corner. The lads were called out by the strangers. The young men decided to find out what the girls wanted. The strangers wanted to treat the boys to fresh milk. They led the boys to a stable with a cow. The boys asked to be shown how to get milk from the cow. Philomena noticed that the boys had fallen behind. She followed them. At this time, the boys were having a new experience. Philomena saw her friend having fun. She left Dionos behind. Pompinia condemned the nuns for their behavior. The girls took her to the bathhouse where Lorenzo was bathing. They poured warm water into his tub and left. Pompinia poured a bucket of cold water on her friend. She watched as the nuns took the lad to the mother superior. Count Zerzinski was rushing to the villa. On the way he was attacked by robbers. They wounded the count's companions. In the clearing, Dzerzinski met Gerbino. The man wanted to destroy the enemy. However, Dzerzinski was able to escape. Friends stopped for the night in the forest. The artist gave advice to Felimone. The man went on a pilgrimage. During the night, Dioneo dreamed of a girl from the road, Simone. Felimena awoke to the boy's screams. She cooled his ardor with a bucket of water. In the morning, Lorenzo drove the cart from the garden. He spotted the nun in the field. The boy refreshed himself at the spring. Pompinia watched him. Later, the heroine brought Lorenzo lunch. She did not allow her face to be looked at. Pompinia blindfolded her friend with a ribbon. She confessed that she liked the guy. The girl kissed him and left. The friends continued towards the villa. Dionio walked on foot. He was angry with Felomena. His friend caught up with him. The couple made up under a tree. The guy liked Felomena's kisses. She discovered the boyfriend's aubergine. The girl promised that they would have fun after the wedding. Dionio released the tension. His girlfriend was shocked. The couple was found by bandits. They brought them to the camp. Felomena saw that Alyssa had been tied up. Alessandro Felici untied the girl's hands. He told them about the journey to Tunisia. Alyssa suggested that her friend get to know the brigand better. She went to Alessandro's tent. Alyssa danced for the man. Felomena was brought clothes. The girl's traveling companions asked Felomena to relieve them. Alyssa took her friend to the stage. The girls decided to have some fun. They ordered the robbers to take off their trousers. The pretty girls came closer to get a closer look at the brigand's aubergines. The men started to fight. Alessandro wanted to stop the girls. The uncle hit the robber. Pompina learned that her fiancé had come to Florence. She told her mother superior that she had heard the voice of their gardener. The woman came to the gardener's house. She provoked the hero. Lorenzo began to speak. The nuns kicked him out of the monastery. On the bank of the river, Dzerzhinsky met Pompinia's friend, Alyssa. She decided to give the man her pearl. Lorenzo sat at the gates of the monastery. Pompinia went back to the cloister. She wanted to make sure the guy was kicked out. The couple met up. They discussed the latest news. Pompinia left for the villa. Lorenzo decided to see her off. The artist came to the convent. He had heard of the mother superior's tastes. The man pretended to be a priest. The nun agreed to give him a job. She led him to the bathroom. The woman was going to help the artist wash. Pompinia and Lorenzo arrived at the villa. Her friends had not yet reached the meeting place. The girl invited Lorenzo to stay at her house. In the evening, the couple discussed the adventures of the hero. Lorenzo fell in love with the girl from the convent who gave him a kiss. Pompina did not admit that it was her. The couple were walking in the garden. Pompinia wanted to kiss her friend. He thought the girl was perfect. Gerbino arrived at Anstagi's villa. Lorenzo stayed behind to fight the enemy. Gerbino pushed the boy into the fountain. Pompinia promised to marry Gerbino if he did not touch Lorenzo. The hero was taken to the dungeon. Gerbino continued to threaten Lorenzo. In the morning, Gerbino told Pompinia about Lorenzo's sins. The girl walked around the edge of the well. Gerbino tensed up. They had agreed to marry if the man would let Lorenzo go. The man ordered his boys to find the priest. However, the painter in a cassock came to the villa himself in the guise of the Holy Father. Pompinia freed her friend. Gerbino brought the priest to the girl. The artist decided to take confession from the bride and groom. Pompinia confessed that she loved Lorenzo. She gave the priest a purse of gold for the man to detain Gerbino. The heroine watched as her lover was led away from the villa. Gerbino confessed to the priest. The face of the artist was familiar to the man. The priest advised Gerbino to take an assassin for entertainment for 30 days. Gerbino's boys decided to trick Lorenzo. However, the lad disarmed them. Count Dzernski came out of the forest. He was in a hurry to the villa of Anastagi. Lorenzo took the blade and went back to the villa. Meanwhile, the priest was performing the marriage ceremony. The painter asked questions. Gerbino did not like them. 
The man was particularly angered by the question about the last time he had washed himself. The priest found Gerbino had dirt under his fingernails. The groom had washed his hands in a fountain. Papina's friends were approaching the villa. The count was also nearby. Gerbino pointed his blade at the priest. The count decided to get even with Gerbino. Lorenzo joined the fight. The boys lost track of Gerbino. The man ordered to find Pompinia. Dzerzinski found Gerbino. Lorenzo also wanted to settle scores with Gerbino. The count conceded his opponent to Lorenzo. The hero stood on the edge of the well. Gerbino didn't like standing on the edge. Dzerzinski wanted Lorenzo to impale his opponent with his sword. Pompinia watched the fight. Gerbino fell into the well. The count and Lorenzo embraced. The count jeered at the hero. Pompinia and the painter stood on the balcony. The man confessed that he was not a priest. Pompinia met Count Zerzinski. She did not want to marry him. Alyssa appeared behind the heroine's back. Zerzinski confessed that he loved the brunette. Philomena and Dianeo entered the courtyard. Pompinia went to look for Lorenzo. The guy was about to leave the villa. The heroine confessed her feelings to Lorenzo. The guy wanted to push her away. But Pompinia repeated to him what she had said in the convent. The heroes and their friends found their happiness. The painter decided to return to the convent. Write in the comments, do you think the heroine made the right choice? It was a Virgin Territory Film 2007. See you in the following videos.